Cake Pop. Cake Pop 2. Good. Album review. What's up, everybody? This is Aiden, and welcome back to Album of the Week. Anyways, today I have one spicy of hell album for you. Um, I know it's been like five weeks since I made an album of the week. I know it's not the most consistent series, but it's a series, so you should be happy. Anyways, this album for this week is Cake Pop 2 by Cake Pop, as you saw in the intro. Um, essentially, Cake Pop is a band pioneered mainly by three people, but there's also a couple others that join in whenever they decide, whenever they feel so. Three main artists in, this, in the Cake Pop band are Dylan Brady, Lewis Grant, and Ravina Golden. The one I'm going to focus on right now is Dylan Brady. Dylan Brady, in my opinion, is an absolute musical genius. I mean, if you're familiar with any of his work, you are familiar that he's also one half of the duo 100 Gex, which I also highly recommend that you go check out. And 10,000 Gex win. Come on, Dylan. Usually I've always been, you know, uh, Dylan's uh, release schedule has always been pretty cool, except 10,000 Gex, like, come on, just tell us something. Like, it's not even, like... Like, I'm sure it's going to be a great album, and it will if it ever does come out, but God, I don't know what the, I don't know what the Gex are doing. Instead, they're doing this on Instagram uh, instead of, you know, making the album. And I know there's, like, promotional for the album, but at least tell us that. At least tell us something. Like, it's they're so cryptic about it. it, it it's, it's, I don't like it at all. Hunter Gex, get your shit together. Anyways. Getting a little, getting a little off topic. I love you, Hunter Gex. Keep doing what you're doing. The point is, Dylan Brady has an absolutely amazing re release schedule. Um, he released the amazing EP, Peace and Love, back in 2018, which is one of my favorite EPs ever. Uh, songs like I'll Make you, I'll Make You Miss Me All the Time and uh, I, Of Course I Still Love You are just absolutely beautiful. And the key of C is just an absolutely groovy mess that I love so much and I can't get enough of. But actually, never mind, I can't get enough of it. It's not, not, uh, I've, I've never found a song where I can listen to it like more than five times in a row without getting bored. Point is, Dylan Brady, absolute musical genius. He's an absolutely fantastic producer and an amazing vocalist. And he brings all that talent and he takes it over to Cake Pop. The Cake Pop 2 is a follow up to Cake Pop's debut EP, self titled debut EP back in 2015. And then six years later, they return, almost seven years later, they return with Cake Pop 2, their first album, their debut album. And at a little over 20 minutes, it's fairly short with only 10 tracks. Some people probably consider it a mini album but cake pop 2 is absolutely genius and it was made in only four days from what i've heard i haven't actually chat fact checked that but cake pop 2 was apparently made in only four days which makes sense because some of the tracks have fairly simple melodies and the transitions are kind of a little weird sometimes but like that's kind of like the quirk of it like that's kind of like what i love what's kind of what i love about it like it's just so like what it is and it doesn't care and it also has a lot of 100 gex influences on it as well i mean it's just dylan doing his thing he's like the he's like the brains of the entire operation when it comes to this album and i haven't even talked about the album yet i'm giving a whole history lesson about dylan brady but what the point is that he's an absolute genius when it comes to his musical art and i love him and along with lewis grant ravina golden and a couple others i forgot their names they make an absolutely insane duo and um let's talk about the songs so First song, Black Rum, is just a nice techno-y, in-your-face shit, and Ravina's verse is so good on this. It makes me want to absolutely fucking mosh. Usually, I don't really like how much autotune is usually in Ravina Golden's songs. Like, uh, some of her, if you're familiar with any of her work, if you know, um, what's it called? Uh, Expensive City, or Don't Give Up, the autotune on, on those songs can be kind of grating sometimes. And it's kind of hard, it, it, but I can look past it and I can enjoy the amazing production, which Dylan provides for most of her songs really, really well. And Black Rum is no exception. Ravina's verse, however, Ravina's verse in this one isn't all that grating when it comes to autotune. It's just the right amount. And the instrumental is fairly good, even though it just repeats over and over again for the entire song. But the verses carry it fairly well. And the beat, you know, switches up several times. And it's pretty good. I really like it. Um, second song, Cape Cake Happy. Is probably my favorite song except for one, which I'll get to later. Cake Happy is so good, and just Ravina's Ravina's verse on this one is also really good. She's just banging out ver absolute verse after verse that is just absolutely amazing, and I love it so much. And the melodies, and also uh, they also sample a crowd cheering, which is a nice little touch. And you know, it's like it's like electronic for a little bit, like, and then for like. 
only like two seconds a little guitar comes in it's like like a minute and a half in and it's so good that part is probably the my favorite part of the entire album and i just want to hear it over and over again and i do listen to it over and over again cake happy, cake happy is a, such a good song um and a lot of these songs are actually fairly short uh, i'm pretty sure the majority of them are under two minutes and that's not there's nothing bad about that um but yeah third song whistle this one is kind of mid I'm not gonna lie for this album and for the quality that it brings for a lot of its songs whistle is just is a very nice short simple song it's also the shortest song of this entire album at a minute and 13 seconds and it just it's just a nice short bum 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 bada bada bum 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 which is like the main instrumental and just like some like kind of like fairly good vocals over it it's nothing remarkable it's not one i come back to all that often but i think it fits into this album fairly well and it doesn't really take it down all that much Fourth song, Magic, takes kind of a more darker turn, but it's still so energetic and just in your face, and it sounds like you're like someone's just like firing a gun, but it's going through the lens of hyper pop. Does that make sense? It sounds like someone's just firing a pistol right like right next to your ear, but there's like a filter that's just called hyper pop, and it's like psh, psh, psh. I don't know if that makes any sense. That analogy made no sense. But also they got Aaron Cartier onto this one, and he is a pretty good rapper on here. And I like, and his vocal style, I, I usually don't like his vocal style, but it works so well with the instrumental in this one that I just have to appreciate it. I can't not like it. I'm gonna go a little faster because, um, fifth song, Ether is just a nice chill break core song featuring pretty much mainly Ravina. And it's pretty nice. It's nice and short and sweet. And I absolutely love the melodies on here and the, and the lyrics. It's beautiful. Sixth song, Candy Floss is an absolutely beautiful symphony and just it sounds like it's like straight out of like some like play or concert it's amazing there's some like brass instruments that come out in the background and some more woodwind instruments that come out and it's just beautiful and it's so cinematic and i love this one because you're sweeter than candy floss and you're sharper than a knife i love it so much seventh song satin bed sheets this one is probably the most overrated track on this entire thing satin bed sheets has a really good instrument too i will give it that but just the lyrics are just like fairly really really mid for this album it's probably one of my least one of my more least favorite track it's probably one of my more least favorite tracks on this entire thing it's not one that i come back to that often but the instrumental is so good that it's not bad at all and it's at least like a seven or eight out of ten for me literally there's no song that's like under a seven or eight out of ten every single song of this thing is literally a banger anyways eighth song boom is also a little overrated because it doesn't it's not all that intuitive the chorus is fairly good it's pretty catchy but it doesn't it's not actually that good look at there's a difference between catchy and good because there's some songs that are catchy like sugar crash by eliotto that's a really catchy song but it's not necessarily all that musically intuitive or good but it is catchy and i will respect it for being what it is but that i know that probably makes no sense for some people but just for me that's how i look at it and boom is literally that but with its chorus and the verses aren't all that amazing it's still like an 8 out of 10 for me probably because like boom 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 it's just it's not bad and the back is and the instrumental is fairly good as well it's it's a brass instrument going boom 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 pretty much over and over again uh for the entire song eighth or no no ninth song palm bachu i don't know if i'm saying that correctly but this song is just the first half is like not really my cup of tea all that much but the second half is just absolute dylan going crazy with whatever he wants every single measure the beat switches up or some cool instruments come in like a flute comes in or like a nice little piano melody comes in or some like bah, 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 comes in or just random shit or in it i love it so much i can't get enough of that ending it's absolutely beautiful and they pull it off in the end with there's a xylophone hitting the last note and xylophones are amazing i love them 10th song almost famous is pro is my favorite track on this entire thing and the first the first two lyrics are i really just want to be famous but everyone around me is sus the sus was a very nice uh addition into this song for sure this is definitely my favorite song it's just so beautiful that it has a more as a piano intro as an is the instrumental which is always which i always appreciate in any song and then it goes into a more um, banging instrumental with a with a um, like a gun reloading as like the beat switch and that works so well in Ravina's verse. She's like, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but we're not even friends. I don't know why you're sliding through my DMs. 
da, 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 and however it goes for the rest of her entire section i love it so much and this song is also the longest one at two minutes and 54 seconds and it absolutely deserves that runtime with how intuitive and how amazing and i love that i love this song so much and it's like a 10 out of 10 for me i can't get enough of it it's absolutely beautiful anyways cake pop 2 by cake pop and dylan brady is an absolutely amazing album i'm freaking freaking loving this album freaking freaking loving this record i don't know if there's vinyls of it but if there is i will buy one and this is such an amazing album and i can't recommend it enough i know it's kind of a long review it wasn't that long actually but the point is cake pop 2 really good album from 1 to 10 probably a light 9 maybe even a middle nine maybe even a, a strong eight i'm not exactly sure somewhere around that ballpark either way fucking love this record so much highly recommend it dylan brady i love you so much Ten thousand gex please for the love of god jesus christ and with that i'll see you in the next video cake pop cake pop chew forever